Uh, I feel it's a great privilege to be here. Um, it's been uh, 20 years since I last visited San Sebastian. Um, and um, I must say, I think I've even forgotten how beautiful it was and uh, how I think you're very lucky to live in a place like this where you have so much beautiful architecture uh, and beautiful scenery. So, what I'm going to try today is to give you a presentation about, uh, first of all, what the, the creative industry is in Denmark, uh, how we work with it, and um, how we've actually maybe changed our focus a bit uh, about how we see the creative industries. Um, and um, that, of course, has something to do with, um, I think we are in the middle of a paradigm shift. Um, I will talk a bit about why I think we are in a paradigm shift. It has, of course, something to do with the way we are going to digitalize and the way the world is changing. And somehow, I think that is going to influence on how we do policy making uh, in, um, in, um, in the creative industries, but also in other industries, it's going to influence how we, how we think about things. So this is uh, my, uh, my agenda, um, which I hope to come uh, through. I've heard I have around uh, 20 minutes to get you through this, maybe. A, I'll get a bit carried away, so it will take a bit longer, but I'll try to, <laughs> to do it within this, uh, this uh, time frame. Okay, maybe just a very bit, little bit about where we come from. I come from the Danish, uh, I'm a part of the Danish Ministry of, um, bus uh, um, uh, of uh, Industry, Business and Financial Affairs, where the Danish uh, Business Authority sits. Um, we are in the Danish business authorities. We have a huge amount of, um, of different uh, things we deal with. We deal with entrepreneurship. Uh, we have a lot of the, the regulation. Um, I won't go into all that because that's not relevant uh, for, what, for what we're talking about today. Just to give you an idea, idea about what, we, what kind of a authority we are. Our vision is to create the best growth conditions in Europe. And uh, we do it through partnership with others to make it easy and attractive to run a business in Denmark. Um, and we have some strategic guide points for posts for our work. We are very much focused on business data. This is also a new thing for us, using our data for, the, for giving it to the business so they can actually make new business models uh, they can work with. Um, it's a very, it's a new area, but it's a very important uh, because it means a lot to the new business models. We uh, work very much that we have predictable and responsible business conditions. We want to make a simple life uh, for the businesses, not introducing too much administrative burdens. And we are very occupied with, with creating growth conditions for all of Denmark, not only the capital of Denmark, which is uh, Komhang, which, where there is a lot of activities, but also outside in the more remote areas. And then we have a lot in regards to international cooperation, working for open markets. We deal with the digital single market, uh, which is you know, the ongoing thing which is going on in the commission now, trying to finalize that. So we are in Denmark, you could say a very rich uh, country. It looks good. Uh, you see, we uh, it, it in, in the latest OECD. It looks good. We are doing okay. But behind this, there is a lot of challenges also, and that, that's what also I'll try to give you. You see, they're the green ones. That is the OECD uh, benchmark. The green ones where we are doing very good is wealth and product productivity level, but where we're not doing so good is productivity growth. Work hours uh, per employee and business investment is not going very good. And uh, productivity growth, which is our main focus now, where we, you can see we have uh, lagged behind and we have even fallen, we can see that a lot of uh, productivity issues in our country and we are not moving in the right direction, we are falling behind, so it's a strong focus, how do we increase our productivity? And um, you can also see that's not... Um, 
I don't know why it is uh, in, uh, in our neighbors in, uh, in Sweden, they call us the Latinos of Northern Europe. Um, and that is because uh, they say the Danes, and it's true, we don't work that much. We like the good life, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, and um, it's a real challenge uh, that, uh, that how do we, uh, we c the government can't increase the number of working hours because it's something that, that is uh, dealt with by the unions and the, and the employers, but it's a challenge that we don't uh, work enough. And maybe we shouldn't work more, but maybe we should work a bit smarter, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a view that, you know, something the government has quite a focus on how we solve this thing. And then there is a business investment, which is not going well, very well um, compared to our neighbors, Sweden, Netherlands, and so on. And if you look behind these figures, I think one of the challenges here is that um, it's especially the business investment in the small and medium enterprises, which since the crisis has fallen behind. And um, I think it's a general tendency and it also goes for the creative industries, that we can see that there is not enough investment in the SMEs, and a lot of the Danish business societies are the SMEs. So this is the challenge we also are looking into how we can solve. solve. Then a bit about, we had a new government uh, two years, one and a half years ago, who's made a, a, a strategy Denmark going for growth, it's called, which is, has sort of three pillars. First of all, how do we get into the new digital world? How do we automate the Danish industry? How do we make them use data? How do we, um, how do we uh, promote sharing economy and all these new tendencies? Industry 4.0, it's called. How do we make one of the most attractive environments for entrepreneurs? How do we do that? Uh, we've got a good starting point. It's quite easy to set up a company and so on in, in Denmark. I think our challenge is not getting, you know, there's a large number of startups. Our challenge is to grow the startups so they become larger companies. We have very, very small and very small enterprises. And of course, then there is a new global economy. How do we place ourselves in regards to the EU and to the international economy? How, does, uh, how do we secure that Denmark has an attractive place in this so we can attract investments and so on? These are the pillars in the government strategy. And then you say, what about the creative uh, industries? Where are they in this strategy? Well, first of all, it's in the digital growth. Um, and it's, of course, in the uh, strengthening the business strategy for the core strengths. And what do I mean that, by that? Well, we have made, uh, or the government has made some areas where they say they are looking at these are the core competencies in Denmark and how do we go through this whole value chain there is in this, uh, these um, different industries? How do we look at the life science? How do we look at education for life science, export for life science, the, the, the framework there is for the life science, and the same in the creative, creative industries? How do we look to, optimi to optimize the framework for these industries? How do we work with this? And we've picked out, the, the government has picked out these areas saying these are some of the main target groups we want to work with and to ensure that we have very optimal conditions here. Um, what is the creative industry? That I'm going to talk a bit about. Um, what actually is the creative industries? Now, um, this, these, I think there are 11 uh, different areas which uh, when you just start, started discussing about creative industries, was something like, like this you discussed. And I think the creative industries is actually, if you look at it historically, is something that's quite new. It was something that, that was invented in the UK in the 90s by Tony Blair, who made his first, uh, who, which government made the first um, strategy for creative uh, industries. And, um, the way we looked at it and have also looked at it in Denmark is that we've taken these uh, areas and said, well, these are the ones who, are, who contain the creative industries. Um, 
A snapshot, what it is in Denmark, is a six to seven percent of the, of the national turnover, 27 billion, uh, 85,000 employees, um, and it's very export-driven, many small and medium-sized enterprises. Um, it has a high educational level. These are some of the characteristics for the, for the industry, which at least in Denmark, but I think uh, I know a lot from the Netherlands and the UK. I think it's pretty similar in a lot of the economies. This is how the creative industry looks. The former government made a strategy in 2013 and uh, I was a part of that strategy group that worked with the, the creative industry. Um, and um, and uh, we did a lot of, uh, we had a lot of discussion. It was a group that was led by, um, by um, it was a private public sector group that was led by uh, the director general of, uh, of the Danish broadcasting uh, television, um, who was chairing the group. And we had a lot of discussions about what is this creative industry and how do we look at it. And what we did in, in 13 was perhaps right at that time, but as I'm going to tell you a bit, I think we actually got it wrong of how we look at the creative industries. And I think we need to look at the creative industries in a new way uh, because this was very much driven by the old economy. And what do I mean by this? I mean that the way we looked at it was very industry-based, sector-specific and creative. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, in the, we looked at first fashion. And then we looked at the fashion industry at itself. What kind of products did they uh, produce? They produced fashion, you know, fabrics, clothes. We look at the architecture, what did they, they produce? drawings. So it was very, very sector specific and very industry specific and we looked at the output of it. And I think that we need to do, and I'll, I'll tell you, that is one of the points with my, my presentation, I think we need to look at it in a completely different way than we did before. Because if you look at the, 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 the really sector specific, you also look at the, the creative sector in a very silo way. Um, and you look of how you can actually support this and you do it a very top-down way um, instead of, and you give, you give grants, you give soft money, you give loans and so on to promote these sectors. But I don't think, and I can see that from the strategy that we did in, in 13, I don't really think it moved the creative industry. Um, and that, even though I was a part of it and thought it was really smart at the time we did it, I thought it was the right way. Um, and we did, it ended up, this uh, strategy, we ended up saying, oh, what we are going to support is, um, is design, fashion, and architecture. These are the things in our main, uh, in our main um, uh, strategy here we are going to support. And it's not that, that Denmark doesn't have a strong um, position in design and architecture is not that strong. It's just a way of thinking, I think, that is, is problematic. And because the way of thinking was, and that's actually inspired from, from, the, from the UK when, when Blair started and the UK started to think about how do we stimulate this creative industry. Then you said, well, in the, in the, in the core of it is the, is the creative industry. It might be fashion, you know, or it might be uh, film. Then you would have uh, music, and you would have sort of a spread out where it became sort of the, the, it came out to the rest of the industry, or rest of the economy, the creative industry. So, and what we really measured and what we had focused on in policy was in the core of, uh, of that industry. So we would stimulate the sector, and then we would think the other things would come automatically. Now, I think that we need to, have, we tur to turn this around. And why, why do I think this? I think this because we are living in a completely world, other world now, which is more uh, coherent, which is much more connected, and which is much more digital than we used to have. So I think we should go from this industry-based uh, cultural approach to a much more 
growth-oriented uh, business approach. And what do I mean like, with that? I mean we should think a bit like investors, like uh, investment banks, investors, about how we can actually promote and roll out these industries. Now, I've made a diagram of here of how I see the creative businesses. Some of them are based, if you go down there, are based on originals. This is um, like an exhibition or like a haute couture where you have one of a kind. This is, this is the originals. This is part of the creative uh, industry, of course. Then there are some who are based much more on experience. In spirit, they can also be once in a lifetime, like a concert or something like that. And then you have the, the, the creative industries which are based on services. That's PR, architecture, design, and so on. And then you have the content uh, industry, which is, um, which is like uh, publishing and, and other areas. Now, if you look at this um, list drawing, you can see what is, what is, what is, what is really, the, the, in, in regards to doing politics, is the essence of this, and if you're an investor. These down below the, the line, they can't scale. You cannot scale an haute couture, not really. Maybe you can make a, a full collection of it, but it's not really scalable. You cannot scale a museum, you cannot scale arts, a picture. It's a one in a kind. Whereas you look up, and the other side, these are all scalable, and they have a lot of potential. So this is, I think, is a very, very, very interesting thing because this is also a thinking of how you could actually look at your industry. Now, there's also a diff difference between uh, services and contents. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the services you would have um, is uh, less uh, develop, labor intensive, uh, but it's very capital intensive if you look at some of these uh, areas. You need a lot of capital to drive scale. Whereas in the, in the, in the film industries and other in these uh, contents, it's much more scalable, but it's very cap capital intensive. But once you've got your concept, you can actually scale it. And I think this has a lot of potential for how you think politics in regards to this. Um, it has been traditionally in Denmark where we, it was like this, all the, the design and the architecture, we thought of that as industrial policies, whereas the content was defined as cultural policies. And I don't know if it's like this in, in this country, but uh, I think that is where we have to change our way of thinking if we want to have a growth policy in regards to some of, the, some of these areas where there is a lot of potential. Because the potential is in the cultural policy areas, but it means that we have to change a way of thinking about it. So I won't go, I won't go into that because I think I've made my point that we should think about how we build for scale and that's how we should look at our, at our, our industries. Now, I'll give you an example of the gaming industry in, uh, in Denmark. Um, I know you mentioned the film industry, but the gaming industry in, in the Northern European context is also uh, very interesting. These are examples of uh, unicorns. You know what unicorns is? It's, uh, uh, it's companies that over $1 billion worth uh, of, um, of value. These are some of the unicorns which are created in, um, in, uh, in, 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 the, in the Scandinavian uh, Nordic countries. Unfortunately, the most uh, valuable ones are Swedish. I don't like that too much, <laughs> but, but they are. Uh, but it's just to say, like, you know, some of them, like King, you know this Candy Crush? Yes. And you could say Candy Crush. I just have to tell you, this company was sold 
at twice the value of Volvo. Okay? Twice the value of Volvo. It says something. And it's not a very old company. And it's, uh, I'm sorry to say, maybe some of you played, I think it's a silly game, but it has tremendous potential. And it's, you, you remember going back, it's scaled. It's scaled there. Once they have the platform, they could actually scale it quite crazily. Twice the amount of Volvo, okay? Now, the Danish gaming industry, we've also got, we've got some growing, uh, um, um, what do you call it, gaming industry. And of course, connected to the Scandinavian industry, I think that's also a very important thing that you have to make some of the clusters where you connect uh, with some of them. It's, um, it's qu doing quite well. It has a, comp a big rise, like uh, it's the number of companies has ri risen by 15%, quite a lot, um, and a big increase compared to the benchmarks, also in jobs and, and revenue. So it's doing quite well. And um, these are some of the recent figures from, from Denmark. And I said, as I said, I started out by saying, I think there is a lot of potential in the creative industries, especially in regards to the content. And that's not, I'm not saying that the other creative industries are not important um, also in Denmark, because the other creative industries have meant a lot, for instance, of creating a brand of Denmark, like we've uh, had a lot with Noma, the food, which would uh, be not of something that would be unique, but it has been, meant a lot for the brand of Denmark that we have a place where we have a lot of good restaurants, it attracts creative people and so on. But it actually, it's not something that you will make a, a growth case or a growth business out of it, it's too unique. But that said, you can see that these are the recent figures from, from, from Denmark that is a lot is going on in regards to the creative industry. It's sort of taking up. And I also think that has something to do with the, with the digitalization and the whole new world about our consumption of, uh, of products that the creative industry makes, actually. So it's taking much more up than, than other sectors. So you remember this? I thought it was very smart when I was part of it in 2013, but I don't believe in this model anymore. I believe that you should look in the, to the creative industry in a different way than we did at that time. So we need, we need a completely different model where we think of the creative uh, um, industries uh, more as a whole instead of the sector-wise approach we have to it. And I also think that we need to look of some of the policy map that we actually have for these creative industries and how we, we, we look at this, this in, a, in a different way. Um, I think there is a lot of going on in, the, in regards to the regulatory framework, which we have to be very observant. Um, we have to be, uh, there's a lot of going on, for instance, in the EU about geo-blocking. Uh, we're discussing that a, a lot at the moment. But there's also a lot about intellectual property rights. How do you secure that? How do you look at the uh, competitive environment? How do you secure that you have an industry, for instance, that is not a, it's not a state-owned uh, um, television channel that produces all the content, but you actually have a private sector that produces the content? because that is very important if you want to go into export and scalability and all this. So, um, so it's a lot of important in the, in the regulatory fr framework. I also think that you should look a lot to the education. I think it's very important that you, uh, you uh, look at the creative, uh, how do you make creative programs uh, in the education? How do you also secure that you have a, a different skill mix focus? There's a lot of new skills that's required in the creative industry, a lot of new computering skills, for instance, uh, which is very important in order for, for this really to, to move. I think also there is much more 
uh, has to be a focal on commercial competencies. A lot of the education we've had in the, in the, in the creative industry has no focus on commercial uh, competencies. And it's very important if you want to make this into a business and not something arty. Not that there's not wrong with arty, but, but it's, it's very important. And then, of course, you have to uh, have access to finance and to capital, which has been quite a, a challenge in Denmark because we have all these as SME, it's been very difficult for them to, to get finance. Um, um, and I'm not talking about projects, I'm talking about investments, really investments, people coming in and investing in the creative sector, that's important. So, I think what's very important in this shift of paradigm is that we, we really, the government, we should, we should think about facilitating partnerships. I think this is very, very important. How do we facilitate partnerships? How do we create an ecosystem? How do we create an ecosystem where there are strong competencies, strong uh, creative businesses that work together with the companies? Um, and then I say, it's so, what is actually going to succeed and what is not going to succeed? If, if, if somebody had asked me, would I think Candy Crush would be a success? I would have said no. But I'm a government official. And I think we should, we should leave these things to the businesses and not do projects about it. Leave it to the business of what they think will drive it. That's the commercial risk there is. Uh, but our role as government is to try and facilitate these partnerships, making it easy for you to be a creative business. Um, I think that's, um, that is our role. That was uh, a bit m over my time. Uh, and, I, you know, I can get carried away by this. But uh, I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, this is how we at least see things in Denmark at the moment. Hmm?